New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. We're talking about uteruses. <laughs> on Ebro in the Morning with the beautiful Lars Styles Rosenberg. I want you guys to give it up for Olivia Wilde on the program. Yay! Director. Yay! New movie, Book Smart, out. Uh, when does it drop? Well, it's playing tonight in some theaters, but really tomorrow the 24th. Tomorrow's the big day. Yes. Uh, about uh, two young women uh, on their way to college. Yes. Uh, I don't want to tell the whole plot. Yeah, how, much do you, how much plot do you like to give yeah, away? We can really. tell this. We can tell two. It's two very smart girls oh, who... Heavy overachievers. Real, heavy overachievers overachievers who realize on their last day of high school that they've done everything except have fun. And they also realize that everybody in their school who they thought was just dumb party people are actually going to really good good schools too. And they're smart. And they somehow figured out how to have fun and be smart. I thought you were going to go straight college scams on this. Like, I was watching <laughs> it, and so I was timely. like, I, would be, I was like, yo, she's going to be really relevant, and there's going to be these college scams, and all the losers are going to get their parents. <laughs> no way. I hate those college scams. That's depressing. I don't want to tell that story. I hate that. Why does, it, why does it depress you? Because, like, those parents have such little faith in their kids. It's just terrible. It's like, it's just uh, everything that's wrong with this country is summed up in that scandal. See, that's why I laughed about it. Because I think that sometimes we don't deal with everything that's wrong in this country. That's true. And shit like that happens. Yes. And we're all, everybody's like, oh, my God. I'm like, it's, it's America. Like, you don't like, think that's look, been happening for years? That's, if, that's, that's how the system is set up. <laughs> Truly. Yes. It's how it's set up. It's been set up for years. And I wanted to tell a story about kids who are smart and truly smart, and they, they are also many other things. And that's what this movie's about. It's about the multidimensionality of women. Right. It's about the ability to be so many different things. We never have to choose. You can be brilliant and also fun and silly, and that's okay. And that's what I want to tell young people. Like, embrace your complexity. But it's also about all the pressures, right? Because I feel like all these kids have so much pressure yes. to be perfect and to make it into that perfect school. You know, the school yes. that their parents dreamed about. Yeah. And then they get so overwhelmed into being this perfect person that they forget to develop yeah. into that person that they're supposed to be. Exactly. Guys, I didn't go to college. I'm all right. Yeah. yeah you'd be all right. You'll and you were right there right. next to Georgetown. I read in the notes here. You grew up in... Uh... I grew up in Georgetown. Yeah. Oh, that's so right. So that's, it's like going to college, right, if you live in the neighborhood. <laughs> where'd, you go to, where'd you go to high school again? I went to a boarding school in Massachusetts. But didn't you go... Where'd you go before? Did you go to any school in D.C.? Yeah, or no? I went to GDS, Georgetown you went to GDS. I went to BCC. Oh. Yeah. I'm a, okay. Yeah. Maryland DC talk. Right. That's right. Well, Taxation is like without nice, representation, guys. BCC is like a nice, is like a public, really nice public school, but a diverse, you know, nice public. School. It's changed since I've left there. They got the IB program, et cetera. GDS was like a pretty nice. Oh, they got the IB school. program, totally. the International Baccalaureate yeah. program. Oh, yeah. It actually feels very different when I go back as a result. Because a lot of the private school kids who would go to places like GDS or Visitation yeah. or schools like that started sending kids to BCC now that they have the IB program. Mm. Gotta have the IB. Before, yo, when we used to play Whitman, do you, would, are you yes. familiar with Whitman? Yes. We used to play Whitman, I've told you this before, they would chant welfare at our games. What? Yeah. They would chant welfare. See, that's the thing. So kids foul. can be so mean. And that's what I'll say about Booksmart is we're telling a story about kids who aren't mean. There's no villains in our movie. We kind of disassemble the idea that there's like mean kids in school. Because if we keep telling stories about mean kids, we're going to encourage young people to be mean. We should just take that option out of the equation. Don't be mean. Just you don't have to be cruel to be funny. It doesn't make you cooler or more popular to drag people down. Well, but you in did the manage. Real world, sorry, Laura, but in the real world, there's assholes. Absolutely. Yeah. In chief. Yeah. I'm glad you went there. I was just going <laughs> to say. No, but do we have to? Pro but do we want to propagate it all the time? You're saying, or do we want yeah, to like, sometimes think, live in a world without it? Well, I think that I think that these movies, these high school movies, do kind of teach young people. They can it contextualizes the experience, right? So it teaches them how to behave, teaches them subtle cues as to like what's funny, how how to to communicate with each other, and we have to give them. I think examples of, uh, of schools or kids that are just like funny without being mean to each other. I like it. I but like you it. did manage to keep like basic disappointments that most kids go through. Yes. Like, you know, um, not getting the man that you wanted yeah. or, you know what I mean, the, the, the guy you had you your want. eyes on for the whole time. Yes. Mixed I think messages. It's, uh, high school has high stakes. It's Adolescence is hard. And being yeah. t young today must be even harder. But it's really, I think, important to, re to acknowledge how, how difficult that time in life is without saying, all right, and the way around it is just to, to be cruel. 
Like, it, it's, it's possible not to do that. I don't know. I think about our responsibility as storytellers, and I think about how that actually affects society. And, and these movies go around the world. People rewatch them. And I just want to, like, I want to implant good messaging into people's minds with also making it entertaining and funny. What, is that what really made this movie stand out to you and the reason you did it? Yeah, I, I love that it was a movie celebrating smart girls. And, and friendship between women, because that's a powerful bond. And I just thought, we can tell a really funny story and made a, make a really kick-ass fun movie while celebrating the intelligence of women, the complexity of women, and honestly, the, they're male allies. There's a lot of good guys in this movie, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they serve as great examples. My, my, fr- my friend made a movie last year that I was sort of in a similar vein of, like, cool, smart, different girls called Dude. Yes, um, yes. And it ended up straight to Netflix, but I recommend that one too. But it was sort of similar in, in that regard. Do you think that – I realized yesterday that every generation parents see – and I think of it with girls particularly. I always remember my, my bar mitzvah, people like seeing the girls and being like, oh, my God, girls these days, they're like so provocatively dressed and they're so – and I remember always thinking like, no, it's always like that in every generation. You just Absolutely. forget. But then I realized this current generation – is the first time when I actually believe it's gonna be different. Where social media will actually make it like, no, no, they're different. This is a, they're pe- different. human beings are different than they were oh, a they generation are. ago. They are, because yeah, technology has fast-tracked evolution. They are changing the paradigm. They're demanding a change. Think of those Parkland kids. Mm-hmm. Think of them standing up at the mic and saying, you forced us to become activists. We didn't want this, but you guys are so bad at governing our existence and our society. We have to speak up. That's happening on a huge scale. So this movie is for Generation Z, who I feel are actually more evolved and the way they look at gender and sexuality they're just they're more fluid there's a completely different perspective now and i think that's good i feel optimistic when i think about them i just feel bad that we left them with such a bad situation like we're like here's the earth it's on fire well that's not us though you're gen x we're we're gen x it was it's our parents it's 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 our parents but we i mean we allowed trump to get elected we allowed but the baby boomers did vote for him they look at the numbers and it really was the baby boomers who put him in office yeah but we were but but we were as we talk about we got fragmented we got distracted that's right there was a lot of things that happened and look i always say hillary lost the election trump didn't actually win it right Right. because she won the popular vote she didn't go talk about jobs in michigan and wisconsin the way she was supposed to Mm -hmm. she thought she had it in the bag we all thought this disgusting reality show real estate loser was like what is happening right now we We didn't take it seriously no yeah and we believed polls like we have to change the strategy absolutely and we also have to think beyond just the presidential election we have to keep our eye on congress we have to get rid of mitch mcconnell like these and and vote local and vote local (laughs) and i think young people today because of social media are more plugged in and they are more aware of local politics because you know we're not helping them in the education system they don't even teach civics in school anymore so social media has taken over the role of education to to engage young people and connect them to local politics and remind them of their power but they kind of know it they understand the significance of their own voices and they vote with their dollars and i think this is a, an exciting time to acknowledge this new generation and to support them and to celebrate the world they're demanding so i want to make a movie that was reflective of everything i think is really cool about what they want and what they're saying. And then for the rest of us to have a chance to be nostalgic. Because that time in our lives was the it was the last time we were truly independent. Like the cusp of adulthood. When you're like mm-hmm. 17, 18, you're figuring out who you are. It's true liberation. But it is also really intense. Were there any scenes that you had to fight to keep? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. There's a stop motion. Uh, animation sequence. I love th- that. That was my favorite scene. <laughs> really? That was my I love scene. you so much. I love that. That is, I'm so happy to I didn't it. mention it because I was like, well, am I giving it away? <laughs> it's okay. It's in the new trailer. It's in our new okay, Red Man okay. trailer. And I love it. And there was, you know, I think why not like use this medium, go nuts with it. Yeah. I always say like, why are you making a narrative feature and not a documentary? It better be because you're using the tools that the medium offers. Like play with it, illustrate what the naked eye can't see, have fun, have fun with the imagination. Like magical realism is great. That's the reason we make movies. So stop motion animation, the underwater sequence. There's a, a dance fantasy number. Like, why not go for it? And I think that is reflective of the the kind of heightened intensity of the adolescent imagination. Like, think about how you used to fantasize. <coughs> 
I hope everybody here still fantasizes a lot of the time. But when you're young, I fantasize a lot. Good, I'm glad to hear it. But it's different. It's it is different, different though. It's a, when I you're used young, to go to. It takes work. I used to. My, my daughter, I used to work. work. I used to. I was basically Bran. I would be like, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically me as a teenager. And you'd be like, where'd Peter go for the last two hours? Yeah. But you're, I know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Like everything, everything was heightened. Everything, like the, every experience. And you really could change your story in 24 hours. You could change your reality. Like as we get older, it's harder to change your life in one night. Like you could get arrested. Bad things could happen. No, yeah, you could change it bad for sure. <laughs> things could get bad overnight. But when you're 17, you do feel like tonight I can change who I am. Like I can, I can go to this, I can go to this concert. I can do these things that will actually change. This my will be story. the biggest thing ever. It'll be right. the biggest thing ever. Right. It's the best day ever. Yeah. And then you get older and you're like, should we go to the show? I don't know. I'm tired. I know it's yo. It's... <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed instead. Um, your parents were very. It says here, uh, your mom ran for Congress she in did. Virginia she ran recently. In, yes, best district. And uh, growing up, they were journalists. Yes. Documentary filmmakers. Yes. So you're political, political, political. Yeah, I was I was steeped in it. You know, I wasn't raised by politicians, but, no, but journalists. People uh, who cared about was what was going on. Yeah, and people who really valued, you know, looking beyond what you're told on a surface level, looking deeper, paying attention. We were raised to pay attention, you know, 100% of the time and to ask questions. I think curiosity is something we were really taught to value. Um, it's not about knowing everything. It's about remaining curious. And... My parents are my heroes, and my sister is a criminal justice activist, and she's also my hero. And uh, I have this a family that just drives me to, to try to really think about my role as a storyteller and how I can participate in creating change and being a, 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 a having a good effect on the world with what I do. And that's the uterus dress because we're living in a very <laughs> yes, thank you, a yes, very we are. Uh, pivotal time. That's right. Things that's are right. happening. Um, I'd love to hear, I mean, I think we're all on the same page with regard to states like Alabama and some of these other states and what's happening there, but, um, you know, I'm Alabama, not surprised. Alabama, goddamn, it makes me think of Nina Simone. Mississippi, goddamn. Yeah. Alabama, goddamn. But uh, I'm glad you Georgia. said that because we've had problems with these states for how long? Yeah. Yes, as far exactly. as progressive-minded individuals who feel like our society society can always be a better, better version of itself. We can evolve. We can live up to, you know, what it says on the paper. Yes, because here's right? the thing. I mean, the debate gets kind of distracted as though it's a, a, a moral issue actually connected to people's beliefs when what it, what it really is, it's all about politics. It's all like hard fought political battles. It's not about human beings. They're not thinking about human beings because what we know from, from statistics, from looking at history is that it's not about abortions or no abortions. Abortions happen. That's right. It's about whether women die or go to prison. It's not, they're not going to stop happening. You're not saving lives by banning abortion. That's just bullshit. It's a bullshit argument to tap into people's moral... Now, I'm a conspiracy theorist. Okay. And I said earlier ready. on the show... I like, I like conspiracy theorists. Get ready. Now, there is the, like you said, the abortion conversation for Hispanics and black people, black mm -hmm. and brown, mm -hmm. the religious aspect of it mm -hmm. causes black and brown people who are religious and very it's part of the family structure... There's not a big belief in abortions. Right, right. So this fragments yes. Right, yes. that population and goes, I mean, I don't like abortions either. Right, but th that's why it's so important to remind people, I think, if you're not going to stop abortions from happening. Well, that's right? why I just will remind people, are you aligning with white supremacy and a racist in the White House? Right, right. And are you going to allow those you? people to fragment your vote? Yes. Because this is all about 2020. That's right. So you're going to have the war in Iran, you're going to have this abortion topic, all of that, plus Trump hasn't stopped running for president mm -hmm. since he got the win. Mm -hmm. So he's been campaigning the entire time. So they're going to use all of that noise to make people emotionally distracted, right. fragment, black and brown Not vote. to mention that we think that a lot of the people who would, should be on our side, that would be based on their demographics, 
We forget that a lot of those people are completely ass backwards on sexuality. Yep. No, and, of a, and a lot of different issues. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to fragment than you might think. Absolutely. They're but people will to manipulation. People will push that narrative, right? The anti the the anti LGBTQ because religious reasons, right. uh, you know, like anti abortion. And they will vote against themselves. Yes. Yep. So it's also really important for us to like I try to have these conversations as much as I can within the Latino community, within my peers, because a lot of people are that's the only thing they care about. Mm -hmm. now, That's plot the only twist. issue. Plot mm -hmm. twist. In many of these states, the black and brown population, you have fathers being arrested at high, high rates. There's yes. high joblessness with black and brown, so you don't have fathers in the home. Mm -hmm. A lot of times women, because they don't have the income and can't do it themselves, are opting for an abortion. Mm -hmm. These people know that those will kids will be the ones to fill up the jails tomorrow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a profit, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. So that's what this is really about. And I also think it's about population because I think these racist white people are concerned that white people will be outnumbered. Absolutely. And the highest percentage of abortions are white women. But don't you, you, you And if they stop white women from having abortions and make it a crime, there will be a lot more white babies born. I, I hear you completely. Additionally, rich white people will still get abortions. Yes. They can travel for them. The people who are in danger, the people who will poor. die or go to jail are the poor people. So the fact that they're being manipulated to vote for policies that are going to directly hurt them is is truly tragic. That's that's what really gets And they're going to use, once again, I'm going to reiterate it for the audience, they're using your religious beliefs yes. to make you choose what you're going to vote for in the ballot box. Yeah. Yo, if you're going to go down this road, go a step further. Where do they get the religion from? The white man, the oppressor. That's right. There you go, see? You got to keep going. Colonization. Go they gave it this. to you from the beginning to trap you. It's all been set up. So it's a mess out here. Well, I but I do appreciate you being so outspoken about it. Do you well, get I appreciate a lot? Of, you being these are the Hollywood about liberals. You guys are, that they this didn't is talk about. this is important though. Like this is significant. You guys are men talking about this issue, and that's what we need right now. I mean, women need to continue fighting this fight in all different ways, but men talking about it is absolutely Super important. Necessary. Well, isn't it interesting? Sometimes people go so far in the, the conversation of like men shouldn't have a say on this that you do a disservice because you're like, well, no, no, men shouldn't have a say in saying what women should do with their bodies, but they should absolutely having a say in that other men shouldn't be making those decisions or making well, and, bad and decisions. And in a country absolutely. that was marketed to the world as f you have freedom of choice. That's right. Why don't you have freedom of choice? Right. Uh, well. The idea that it's a pro-life issue gets me too with the amount of people who are dying in jail. They're killing like, babies at the border. The right. same people. The babies yeah. are born. They don't care anymore. It's only up until birth. Yeah. Post birth. Post birth. No, the, ba the babies Have are black the and brown. Care they don't care. That's oh, really luck. what it is. Yeah. Alabama executed six people this year. So don't talk to me about pro-life. Yeah, that, that was always the most basic thing was like, how could you be pro-life and pro-death penalty? <laughs> but that's always existed also. Yes. Um, more importantly, do you and Jason Sudeikis watch Game of Thrones or not? Nah? We don't. We don't. I had a hunch I've you never did. seen an episode. It's terrible. I had a My hunch. favorite thing in the world is getting really involved now in like the debates about Game of Thrones without understanding who anybody is. Well, do you have fake lines? Like my agent. Um, d lies and pretends that he watches Game of Thrones so he has, can avoid the conversation. I love it. I love so it. So I oh, practice I with him. I'm like, I'm like, who do you think's gonna get the throne? You know, I was doing the whole thing. Do you do you lie or do you just come out and say, no, I don't watch it all? I I say I don't watch it all. Except the other day I found out that there's a character named Danny, and I was like, Daenerys. What? Yes. Yeah, but do they call her Danny? They started they, calling her Danny. I was like, this, what is this? The show? last two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, so funny you say that. That's that, really funny. To so me. You, wait, you were amused that in this ancient show they yeah. would call someone Danny. Yeah. Because I was listening to a podcast about it, and they were kind of saying they think that that nickname only ended up on TV because it's what people said yes. in, in the world. Because yes. when the show first uh, started, it funny. was Khaleesi. Exactly, that's what I thought. Mother of Dragons. Exactly. Daenerys Stormborn. Like, Daenerys Stormborn. This is Danny Stormborn. Over First here. of her name. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's all, it was like that long. Now you're just Danny. I know. It was too, it was, uh, and by the way, let's be honest. Brand the Broken was lazy. Well, it's horrible. It's the worst nickname ever. It it's was lazy. really bad. And let's Sorry, be honest. You Olivia. take the name. One Daenerys, day I'll catch up. You add the you add an I to the name Daenerys, and it's Daenerys. And now you're a linebacker on the Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> it's just true. <laughs> that fast. That's funny. Listen, her name is Olivia Wilde. She has a new movie, Book Smart. Uh, it is out everywhere tomorrow. Yes, it is. We appreciate your time today. Oh, this is so fun. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Congrats so much. on yeah, your congrats. directorial debut. Thank you. First of many. First yeah. of many. Do it. Yes. Give it up. Olivia Wilde. Woo!